Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So in just recent um, videos, I painted the Majestic Mountain Watercolor Challenge for the um, Glacier by Schmincke Watercolor set that I sent out to the monthly subscribers. And we did this one, this one, and a very, very light, kind of layer version of it and um, it seems to be going really well you guys seem to want even more ideas for painting so um, I did just release this modern glacier one done with the mystic set of Jack's watercolor so the other ones were done with the um, the Schmincke glacier set and these are done with the mystic set by jackswatercolor.com so I was going to do another one, another version with a little bit more water and a little different perspective. Um, so this again, I'm going to, I just kind of like the angles for glaciers with the flat brush. So this flat brush is the half inch flat brush. It's a synthetic brush available on my website. If you really don't have one and you'd like one, I like the amount of water it holds. It's not too much. So it does a really good job. So as always, um, I'm going to use a little bit of the majestic green because we didn't really use that before. So we're just going to activate it and just kind of um, start out adding some crazy green down here. And uh, in just a really, really nice loose way. And then and we're just going to kind of wet it a bit more. And create some um, water splashes there and let's get some cerulean and mix that cerulean in just to get more of the blue tone so this is the majestic cerulean before um, I used the uh, magic forest and while this is wet I'm just kind of going in a few little round circles here just to give the appearance of little tiny pieces of ice so see how I'm doing that just while it's wet I'm charging in the colors to to shape out some little pieces with the mystic cerulean because it's just a really nice light blue beautiful granulating color and they're just kind of random little blocks of ice here um, just a little angular you can see how they're they're charging through and as I take a little bit more of the color and charge it around the little blocks of ice it just leaves this really nice little uh, piece of deeper granulation in such a beautiful way and then the rest is kind of like now you realize it's water right because it's just just being uh, these wispy kind of back and forth motions, it just does lend itself to water so easily. And don't worry about like all this roughness is great because that's what we see in reflections, especially when um, different lights are involved. And we'll just let these little white spaces just kind of be little ice caps, little pieces of ice. So I've been doing more and more challenges. I typically do a lot of these uh, as I'm developing out a palette just to see what I might actually like as far as more, you know. Um, and by the way, I'm, I'm taking Mystic Shadow and I'm just going to do an up swipe like this. So the, the idea is to swipe directly up on the paper and then just kind of give it a little bit of an angle. I'm knocking this in. This is the uh, gray toned paper that comes in the subscription that I sent you guys uh, for uh, January, which has arrived already. I usually mail them the month before so that a lot of people aren't waiting for them. So this is going to be the kind of the darker one. I really want a nice watermark here with this. And I want these lines to just kind of be up and down so I'm going to do them rather random but I want the lines to be linear because I want to try and give the impression of multiple facets of um, surfaces and planes as this glacier turns towards the light 
So of course, as it turns towards the light, it's going to have still those angular, um, those angular cuts, but at the same time, it's going to uh, kind of reflect a lot of a lot of white, right? Which is kind of an icy tone because this is gray tone paper. And then as I go up on this surface, I think I'll mix in a little bit of the Mystic Violet and change the direction of these, still keeping them rather light. And then we're just gonna let the eye kind of figure it out. Maybe charge in a little more color, more towards the back, just by kind of hitting it and letting the granulation take effect. And then on this plane here, um, I still want a lot of light, but I am gonna kind of do it in a weird crackly way, just so that it, it does look uneven, kind of like you're looking at ice. I don't know what I'm heading for is kind of just giving it a little plane here with some dimension. But also taking advantage of some of this really luscious color. Now before this side area dries, I'm going to add in, just charge in a lot of the Mystic Shadow color. I love this color. It's so beautiful. There we go. So we got some nice things going here on the side. I like that. Really, really pretty. So just taking a little more of the Mystic Shadow and just charging it in. I don't know why my color looks more blue than purple today. It's really strange, like on this paper, maybe because it's gray tone. I'm gonna see if I can get the temperature more right. It's probably just because the light's pretty bright. I'll turn it down just a bit. It's very shiny. So on this side I have that and as we kind of get towards the water um, I almost feel like I want to add salt but what I might do is hmm let's see what happens when we add a little salt. Let's just put a little salt down on this lower portion here and see if it gives me anything interesting that might be fun. So moving into my Mystic Violet color, um, I'm going to create a rather big structure of the ice and then add some mystic amethyst. And again, I'm trying to create these like up and down strays, connecting the shapes with these nice little bars because they really do kind of like tell the story really good. And then this would be the top plane of the surface right here. And then maybe there would be a little thicker bar here and then a washed out angular area with the bar going down. So see how that's like a little bit by doing this um, little bit here and I'm leaving a lot of white space. Now I'm developing this top plane of the glacier with a little bit of this color. I think it's almost best like if you're not really acquainted with um, like two point perspective or one point perspectives, then it really helps just to see the entire painting done before you proceed. Because then you can kind of like work out how I got the different levels. You know what I mean? And then, and, and again, I, I'm not trying for perfection here. If I were trying for perfection and it wasn't watercolor and I was just doing this as um, a way to actually do something that, you know, read perfectly, then of course I would draw it out with a technical pen 
and I wouldn't be trying for anything this loose. But I just want to give the loose impression of a glacier. So here I'm taking more of that mystic shadow and I'm just starting at the bottom and I'm turning. So I'm turning my brush up so that it gets these nice little strikes. And then I'm going to take some mystic violet and come down. Mix in a little bit of mystic amethyst as we get more towards this top piece. And again, this is just a much different shape. And as it cuts into this foreground, I'm making it lighter. Just by adding some water on my brush, keeping things very angular and leaving lots of white space. So this is the lighter and as it heads back, I'm connecting some of the shapes with the darker colors, but again, leaving a mix of darkly charged shapes. But again, you don't want the shapes to be too broken. You definitely want connected shapes so that the eye can more easily read them. And keeping them linear like this, I find is just much easier to understand for um, the eye, you know, it's not like confusing it. So that's just a little more advanced technique is when you do formations, I find that much like buildings, like if you were building a city, you wouldn't be putting a lot of twists and turns necessarily, you know? Okay. So now if we want to, we can actually take uh, some more color here and just kind of develop some of this out a little bit more. And then you could take, you could also take the palette knife and dip it in like maybe the black, the glacier black. And you could scratch in some of the shapes. So literally like say this is, I'll take some of this purple. So say this is one of the lines of the glacier here. That's another, that's another. And you kind of want to do this while it's still vaguely wet, bringing some of the structure here down. Now, of course, this is just a practice paper. If I were really trying to develop this, it would be much easier on Arsh, you know, but by digging into the paper, I'm actually able to establish some more of the style lines. And then as this watercolor is starting to mix with the, with the salt, it's not a bad idea to see if we can charge it up with a little more blue since I want it to be looking like water and then see what happens. I find that this particular, um, charging when salt is present kind of works out the best on more rough paper. Uh, so I find that it kind of works the best on like arches or Fabriano, but I am going to give it some water here. Keeping it loose. Now this is starting to kind of like, you know, wean out a little bit, right? So to get it a little more color, we're going to go back in and add a little bit of the green. This is called mixing on paper. I do this a lot. This is actually a lot of ways that I have developed my own watercolor is just from loving certain combinations on paper. And then I'm like, you know, I really, really want that in my studio. So then I'll develop that pink color because I've just kind of put it together and felt like it just needs to be a little more blue or a little more this or a little more of that. And, you know, and that's how I've come up with my colors. And I think maybe my history, um, with my mom being a fashion designer. So I grew up in fashion around a lot of color. So I think it's just kind of second nature to me, 
you know, um, color's just a thing that I, it's just always been part of our lives and part of my life as an artist. I've never, ever not been in a room where there wasn't like a very very colorful kind of situation going on okay so there so see how some of the blue is charging in hopefully that salt will kind of give us some weird effects that may look a little bit more like water maybe if not then we can always take a little bit of white even though i don't tend to like to use white and we can um, we can create it. Now I'm going to kind of go here and give it a little more dusty appearance just by taking my brush and kind of scrubbing in some of the blue. Again, I, I kind of like have in my mind that keeping this linear strokes is really going to be the way to go here. And just for fun, I'm going to take a little bit of the amethyst and I'm really going to dull it down with water and I'm going to give myself some reflected light, just like that. Easy peasy. Then you can also, if you just, if you don't, if you get any harsh lines, you can also take it away. But that's just enough and it's going to dissipate a little bit. See how that's kind of like going into some of the wet and it's getting there. Now this I'm hoping will give me a little more water, but it kind of looks like the water's coming in. You know what I mean? I feel like this little area here is just a bit too much. It's too sharp. So we can just tap out a little bit and maybe give it just a little more shadow in there. And as these dry, if you want more color mixes in them, you can either wait till they dry and reinforce a flat line with the side of your brush and just some watercolor with less water, or you can charge it like I am with just some of the color, um, keeping it linear as if it's just kind of reflecting lots of light. And um, same here, it's just kind of giving it a little little shadow on the side you really have to i think to master shadows you really have to uh, do a mixture of things you have to study a lot of of surfaces and see which ways the shadows go and kind of get your eye used to looking at um the two-point perspective and when i mean two-point perspective it's mainly like um so if i have Let's just use the end of my brush. So if I have a one point perspective, that means that the perspective is from here. And so the lines all go out from that one point. If I have a two point perspective, then they're going to be somewhere off the page, usually like over here. And that means all the lines intersect going in a radius from that point and then across from this point. And so if you look at something that is already done for you when you're looking straight at it it always has a pretty much two-point perspective you know and that's what makes it have a three a third dimension otherwise it's just going to be really flat and so that's what makes uh, curves happen that's what makes angles happen if you you really see it in cityscapes those are the easiest ways to see them I wonder if I have a cityscape on my thing here no I don't I wish I did I wish I had one of my sketchbooks here so I could show you like uh, some of them they just have different perspectives so maybe one of the building here I know what I can do while this is drying when I talk about perspective so say you have a point um, there we go so say you have a point over here right so if this point let's just make this the point so i don't draw my mat if this is one of the points of perspective then all of the lines coming from here are going to go like this and as the eye from where you're you're standing as your eye looks up the lines are going to go up 
correct? And then as your eye looks down, the lines are going to go down and then say, this is right in front of you here but then you have another point right it's just not one point perspective there's always a second point so the second point perspective would be like say somewhere over here it could be higher it could be lower it could be whatever but say this is the second one and so the second one's going to come like this and as it develops you can see how it reflects across this plane now you would do this in pencil um, my eye, after a while, you just see this. So as these lines get connected, right? So you can see this one and this one, just straight up and down as they get connected. You can see here where there's one plane there, right? So there's this plane here and this plane here. And now we're starting to see how the eye sees perspective right you're starting to see how the eye sees everything and what surfaces you're deciding so if i were a glacier and this was one surface right here and then this would be the other surface as it turns the corner right so say it goes up like this so these perspective lines would essentially, if it were perfect stairs, they would go like this, but then this doesn't change. So as it moves up and the view moves up, see how the line changes, right? So that's how uh, you decide what, which way you're going to uh, draw your perspective lines, you know, and that's how you build out those three dimensional objects. Now, this is like really, really rough, but as you can see, I'm going to start building them out. And then I go back to this line and then I can go back here and and this is how that kind of builds so anything that turns on its axis is going to come and be part of this but essentially it's two points it's two point perspective to, because I'm standing here so one and two and then if I move it would shift right? Or if I move and that's how your vision shifts as you go along. So kind of a really quick little thing on perspective. Um, we can get into more of those later because they can be a little overwhelming, but you know, you can also get books on perspective and there's tons of videos on perspective. So for me to get something to make it look not so flat, you have to play with the shades and the lines to make it look like it's not just on a flat surface. Now values can have a lot to do with that. And values are the light versus the dark. So like this area here is darker than this area, which makes this area look like it's kind of attracting the sun or in the sunlight. And this side makes it look like it's more on the shadow side of things, right? And this is like a mid range. So we're like, what's going on here? Is there light or is there not? We could actually start to make everything on this side look darker and that would bring the eye into the center so once this is all dry you, there's a lot that can be done you can go back and literally start adding in more colors you know you can charge it up with a little more green and you can see like okay so say say i'm right here at the base of my um at the base of my glacier. Well, wouldn't it make sense to kind of like charge this up with more color and almost like you could even almost just really shadow this, right? Solidly and fill in this area because technically other than even in shadow, we have lights and darks. The eye is definitely going to take that and read it as the dark area and then automatically know that this is where the light is right and then that's why this is lighter than this because it's just on a brighter plane and we have the the sun kind of telling you where the light is coming so if you look at this really carefully and you squint you can kind of see like this area here technically should be darker right because it's not on the same plane and this area here could be darker so now you're starting to see where like there could be values here right? And this one doesn't make any sense to be this light. And so I can go back in and I can kind of connect this entire surface with a little layer or a glazing of dark. But remember, 
still in the shadows, there's going to be lights and darks. So if you make that dark, you kind of still have to have a light version of it. So how would you do that? Well, in watercolor, you know, you could just wait till it's dry, or you can also uh, remove some color in some areas and then wait till it dries and then be real strict and just put a little bit of dark in areas, leaving some of the light because you still, in my mind, need a variation of color. So you just pull some back, blend some in, and then you now start to realize that, okay, I should have done this on like nicer paper, not practice paper, maybe Arsh or Fabriano, if I really want to keep working this. And that's where the difference is come when you start to get a professional artist wanting to rework things and add layers. Simple papers just won't do it. The, the better papers are meant to handle it. And so with beginners, a lot of time you'll struggle with a really good paper. Like a lot of people say they, they have a hard time with arches. Well, that's because it's meant to be worked with. It's meant to like stand up to multiple scrubbing, removing, adding color, layers, salt, everything we want to throw at it. It's meant to to handle that, right? So now my feeling on this is that I can do no more on it until it completely dries and then I can come back to it tomorrow. And then I can look at it from a distance, see where I want the eye to read different things in it and think about one, which color is going to go where? Like maybe do I want more of the amethyst as we move into here? Because I kind of feel like this, although this is a beautiful color over here, I kind of feel like I would like to see a little more touch of amethyst moving in on this direction, you know, and then just wait and see if that's enough, if I should just kind of add a little bit to some of the lights and darks, or if the tonal paper is fine, because it's got like that icy gray look to it. But again, you can't keep wetting it and beating a dead horse. So like you have to kind of at some point be really patient and know that this is the first stage. This is the first layer and typically where I stop with all of my beginners. And then I wait and let everything dry. And then I go back and start to look and develop certain areas over others to give it more dimension to bring some things forward and let some things push back based on tonal value. This is a really good example. So when I did this originally, I stopped at a certain point, let it dry, and then I went back in. And as I went back in, I started to use the same color in glazes just to reinforce which areas were going to reflect the darker side of the mountain and which were going to stay lighter. And this is how it turned out. Even in the clouds, a little more modeling, a little darker areas as we're here, a little lighter versions of the purples going into a very, very light area, and then still light here, but then dark as we appear closer to the mountains or the glaciers. So this is actually even darker um, in real life then it looks here, there we go, looks a little darker now. I think my lights are just super bright and they're reading this purple that Violet's like incredibly different than they actually are. I think you'll actually have to um, tune into the group page to see the true representation of this because it is truly beautiful. And I am gonna be putting it in prints on the website so you'll see it everywhere and get a feel for it. But in any case, I hope this was helpful to you. Let's go forward with this and keep working on it. And I will post the final version of it in um, the group after I've had time to kind of like evolve it and work with it a little bit more and, um, and just play with it. Because I think that ultimately there is so much that can be done here with this and it is already so pretty, but these colors, as you can see, they're so vivid and so bright and so bold. So there's a lot that can happen here with this beautiful um, watercolor painting moving forward. It's really, really pretty. All right, guys. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, I hope it made sense and it wasn't, I don't, I don't mean to talk over your head if you're a really, really true beginner, but just know that these are things that can happen down the road, things that you might want to start thinking about now and little techniques that you can add to your arsenal to make your paintings even better and less of a struggle. I do like what's happening here. It is starting to like make it 
just a little bit different. So hopefully it will continue to evolve on this paper. If not, then I'll just do another one on Arch. <laughs> Have a great one, you guys. And I hope you are enjoying this watercolor subscription. I really am. This is, uh, I think, the third video I did for it. And it's really a lot of fun to get these in the mail. I, I love playing with them. Have a great one. And if you want the link to go get it, just go to Jack's Watercolor and look for the monthly watercolor subscription on jackswatercolor.com or check out the link below.